So the first reason to build that DIY home server that you've been putting off is saving money. Saving money is probably the main reason people want to build a server in 2023. For a small upfront cost, it could save you tons of money in the long run if you're using your own hardware to stream content and store files instead of paying for subscription services. And if you don't want to go out and buy expensive new hardware, single board computers are a small cheaper option to get you started. If you're not super familiar with single board computers, don't worry. I'll link a video at the end of this one that'll push you to a video I made all about single board computers and getting started with them. Yoshi. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, I named my dog Yoshi. Hello. Just simple convenience is a growing need for a home server. With every device on your home network trying to connect to the internet, it's becoming a nightmare trying to manage them all, let alone controlling all the automation. A home server can host multiple open source applications that'll help with home automation, an application like Home Assistant, or can block ads on your entire network, like Pi-hole. Security is obviously important when it comes to your personal data. A locally managed home server will help keep sensitive files off remote servers in an unknown location being managed and observed by unknown humans. Storing those files yourself turns your home server into your own digital file cabinet. I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to trust corporations with my personal data less and less every day. So the more files that I can store locally, the better. Another reason is just revamping and upcycling old hardware. Revamping existing hardware that you already have in a closet, like an old PC, into a home server is not just cost effective, but it's also environmentally responsible. Rather than discarding old tech, you breathe new life into it, reducing e-waste. I'm really trying my best to do my part when it comes to reducing e-waste. I'm trying, I really am. If you don't wanna buy new hardware, go in your closet, pull out that old laptop, yes, the one with the crappy old i3 in it. It probably has more than enough power to run multiple server applications, trust me. Wind's starting to pick up and the rain a little bit. I don't know why I decided to do this video outside. It felt nice, it's been super hot here in North Carolina and this is finally a good night where it's nice and breezy, and of course it's raining. So another reason to build your own home server is often overlooked, I think, and it's just the learning aspect of the whole thing. Learning the ins and outs of building and maintaining a home server is extremely valuable. If you're looking to get in IT and work in IT and wonder how you can get experience without a job, this is it. Sure, you can put on your resume that you helped Granny troubleshoot her router, but trust me, having your own personal home lab that you built yourself and maintain yourself looks a lot better on a resume than knowing how to power cycle a router, you know what I mean? Now that you're good and motivated, you can go ahead and start that home server project that you've been putting off. But before that, check out this video I made where I turned this old junk Dell that I wasn't even sure would boot into a legit home server slash NAS, where I'm gonna be building it and hopefully making update videos on it. But it was a process. I mean, I wasn't even sure this thing would boot and I turned it into a pretty sick looking home server, I would say, not to brag. If you're not looking to make the big leap yet in building a home server, try out the single board computer method I mentioned earlier. 